Hello. I'm going to read from um, a book which has got some of Lord Pentland's meetings in it. Lord Pentland um, was a British man, real name Frank Sinclair, but he inherited the title Lord Pentland. And um, I think he spent 20 years working with Ospensky, he was so very heavily Ospensky person. But um, in the last year of Gurdjieff's life, Pentland went over to France, studied with Gurdjieff, and Gurdjieff appointed him the head of the Gurdjieff Foundation in the USA. In the last year of Gurdjieff's life, you know, he was in, not in very good condition. And he worked with the students in a very limited way. And um, Pentland is recorded here by um, William Patrick Patterson. He says that a person has no real eye but groups of different eyes, he said, really goes much further than we, than we suspect. One eye or group of eyes may be antagonistic to another, or they may not even know of the other's existence. Buffers separate them. One eye signs the check and another must pay for it. It can be quite a problem if you see what I mean. Well, I don't see what he means. Everybody goes home to the right bed, don't they? If they go home to the right bed, that means that there is an identity in there that is taking them home to the right bed. Right? So people do have a sense of identity. But the, the interesting thing is that um, for many people out there who are mechanical and robotic and sheep-like, their identity is all the same meaning it is kind of part of the herd identity. For instance, um, all the sheep in a field um, know where they're supposed to go to sleep at night. And they all know because it's sort of one collective intelligence. One intelligence that is collective, it means it functions through the bodies of 50 sheep, for instance nothing wrong with that. So spirituality basically means, amongst many things, separation from the herd, so that you gain your own I. Separation. Uh, and the Pentland says that we have um, many eyes that are antagonistic to each other. What he's talking about here is the many characters in the false personality that flash across your face during the daytime. Um, at 10 o'clock, you might feel like a murderer. At 11 o'clock, you're hungry. At 12 o'clock, you're everybody's good buddy. At one o'clock, you're feeling responsible and proactive. At two o'clock, you're feeling a bit sulky. Three o'clock, you're like your grandmother when she's in a bad mood, and so on, right? These are called the many eyes. I would not call them eyes because they're, they're more like characters. It's true that they... When your grandmother is in your face, she talks as if she is controlling you. That's what she thinks, but actually you are also controlled by the, the collective herd mind, actually. Which is why, even if you've got your grandmother's character on your face, or if you feel like a murderer on your face, whichever character is there, you're still going to find yourself home in the right bed at night. 
So this clearly shows that there are several different things that are operating inside of us at the same time. One is what's inside the head or what's inside the face really. Which of your characters is operating the personality? And then um, in your torso there is a second intelligence which is controlling you finding your way home to the right bed at night and that second intelligence is for most people it's collective so there's a division between what's above the shoulders and what's inside the torso now interestingly um, if you look at uh, an anatomy diagram from ordinary Western medicine, you can go and look it up on Wikipedia, you will see that in the body, in the middle of it, um, there is something called the celiac plexus. Plexus means like um, a, a big clump of neural fibers. Neural fibers like are in the brain, in the head. Um, it's like there's a second brain or an older brain and that's in the middle of the torso and that's called the celiac plexus. Um, esoteric people call it the solar plexus uh, because it has some sort of esoteric connection with the sun.